Hey guys, my name is Caden here with Kepler Electronics and today we are going to be building a small Arduino robot that can be driven using a PlayStation 2 controller. All parts and code used will be linked in the description. Let's get started. Let's begin with the chassis. This chassis is a Pololu Zumo chassis that we will be outfitting with 75 to 1 Pololu Micro Metal gear motors. The chassis includes an integrated battery holder that holds four AA batteries. I don't have footage of this being assembled, but it is fairly simple. I used a small piece of double-sided foam tape to hold the edge connectors in place. There are two wires coming off of each of them. Don't worry if they're a little loose when soldered, that shouldn't be a huge deal. Feed those wires through the top of the case. These motors have already been soldered. Be sure to keep the ends of the wires as a point, as this will make our lives a lot easier ahead. It also makes it easy if you can color code your wires. I have blue and white wires for one motor and red and black wires for the other motor. Take the motors and place them in the slots like so, making sure to keep the front edge of the motor flush with the edge of the chassis. Now take this top board and feed the wires through it. It may take a little work to get the motors in place, but once they're in place, they're in place. Your top board may look a little different as the chassis is advertised as having an acrylic top mounting plate, as mine definitely isn't. It works well enough, however. Now take a small nut and place it in this hole at the front of the chassis. This will hold it in place. Take one of the small screws and screw it in. Do this for the other side. Inside the battery compartment, place the nut inside one of the recessed areas and hold it there while screwing the screw into the nut. Do the same on the other side, and there you go. Next, take the larger nut and insert it into the holder on the side. Then take the sprocket with the circular hole the washer, and the allen key screw. Insert the screw into the sprocket's recessed side as opposed to the side with the post and top it off with the washer. Then screw the sprocket into the nut in the side of the chassis. Make sure it spins and then do the other side. Next, take the sprocket that doesn't have a circular hole and examine it. Make sure that the flat side of the sprocket goes towards the chassis. Ensure that the sprocket's hole matches up to the motor shaft's flat side and push it in. It may take a little pressure, but do the same to the other side. Finally, take the treads and stretch them around the sprockets. If they seem to not be straight, try flipping the sprockets on the motors around. That seemed to work for me. After we have finished our chassis, we move on to the board. The board we will be using today is a Lynx Motion Bot Borduino. This is an all-in-one board with servo control, logic, and even a buzzer. When you get your bot board, you know, you may want to order some extra pin jumpers, as mine was lacking one or two, and this project won't work without them. You need jumpers at all the locations I am pointing at, although is it extremely useful to remove this single jumper. This jumper activates the onboard buzzer, which can get quite annoying. I will have a Lynx Motion diagram showing where all the jumpers should be located in the description. That one will include the buzzer jumper, so remove that one. On this side of the board are the servo pins. We can commandeer these servo pins for our controller. I purchased a Lynx Motion controller which came with an included breakout connector for the port. You could save some money by purchasing a wireless controller off of Amazon and foregoing the breakout connector. That would mean you would have to opt for a simpler connector though. I will have links to several of these in the description along with some diagrams showing the wiring of these other connectors. These pins here will be used to connect to the controller. I use a 3 pin female to female connector which if you don't have one of these you can totally use 1 pin female to female cables. Anyways, this wire goes purple at the bottom, then blue in the middle, and then yellow. These connect to the DAT pin, the CMD pin, and the ATT pin in that order. Next, I connect one more wire directly above these three. This connects to the CLK pin on the breakout. To the right of that pin goes one more wire which connects to the 5 volt pin. And finally, a wire directly to the right of that one which connects to the ground pin. After this is done, let's test to see if the wiring is correct by using some features built into the Arduino software itself. First, we need to connect a battery. This can be done with the battery holder built into the chassis, but since I had a 9 volt lying around, I decided to use that one. To connect a battery, we need to use a small flathead screwdriver to unscrew this green block. You will be connecting the voltage logic inputs, or the VL inputs. Black goes to negative, red goes to positive. After this is done, connect a battery and verify that the lights turn on. Good. Now, let's connect a mini USB cable. 
Next, we're going to need the libraries. You may as well download both of the libraries at once, so let's go to Bill Porter's website to get the PS2X library. This is the newest version of the library, so we'll want to use this one. Next, we need to download the library for the Adafruit Motor Shield. Click the Clone or Download option and click Download Zip. Next, copy the downloaded folders and navigate to the Arduino folder. It's in the Documents folder on Mac. Enter that folder, then go one level deeper and go to the libraries. Paste the two folders here, but they aren't finished yet. Enter the MadSci PS2X folder and move the PS2X underscore lib folder out of there into the main library folder. Feel free to delete the other folder. It won't work unless you move it out of that folder. Next, download the code file in the description. Uh, the base of the code was made by Arduino forum user HazardsMind and LynxMotion themselves, with the necessary tweaks made by me to ensure that the motor shield would work with that code. Now connect a PlayStation 2 controller to the port you have wired up. I used a wired controller in this example because it's just one less thing to troubleshoot, but if you want to, feel free to use a wireless controller. It should work the same. Ensure that the bot board we know is sufficiently connected to the computer, and then ensure that your settings match mine shown on screen. The port number, however, may not match my port number, but that should be fine. Hit the button that is labeled Upload. Wait until the black bar at the bottom says it has completed downloading. Next, mouse up to the small button in the top of the screen and open up the serial monitor. Press the reset button on your bot Arduino and wait to see if anything happens. If you get garbled text on the screen, check to see if your baud rate equals 57,000, as that is the rate at which the board is communicating, and if that is off you get gibberish. Once the message showing that your controller is connected shows up, you can disconnect the controller, USB cable, and battery, and we can move on to the next step. We need to connect the bot Arduino to the chassis. You normally use standoffs for something like this, but this leaves us with two problems. The board is ever so slightly too large for the chassis, and the standoff holes on the chassis don't even line up with the holes for the bot Arduino. I found that this double-sided foam tape works well to hold the board at the chassis. I did have to layer it to account for the motor and battery leads because they stick up out of the chassis slightly. I used 7 layers of foam tape in 2 different rows, and after applying some pressure, the board holds extremely well. Now it's finally time to wire everything up. Take the shorter of the two positive wires and insert it into the positive logic voltage or LV opening in the block. If you can, try and lay these wires between the servo pins, as this will help with wire overhang in the final build. Do the same for the shorter negative wire. Use a screwdriver to firmly lock the leads in place. This is the Adafruit MotorShield V2. This is a little board that sits on top of the bot Arduino and controls the motors. Even though the bot Arduino has 15 servo ports, it can't control DC motors without something like the motor shield. The version that I have needed the pin soldered, so I had those soldered to the board. Adafruit has instructions for soldering on their website, which will be linked in the description. Next, let's unscrew the block for power as well as the block for M1 and M2. The motor shield board snaps into the larger board like so. It's okay if the pins hang off the side, they aren't necessary for our purposes. Connect the positive lead to the positive terminal and the negative lead to the negative terminal as before and screw down. Now connect the motor leads to the blocks labeled M1 and M2. It does not matter which wire goes on which side, although we don't use the center terminal. To connect the controller port to the chassis, I used about 5 layers of foam tape, attaching the port to the open space on the motor shield. That's it! Now you can start playing with your new toy. It's actually a fairly quick machine, but be careful when driving it on something like a table, as I accidentally drove it off when filming this video. Just one of the side effects of trying to manually focus a camera and operate a tiny robot at the same time. Either way, the board ended up disconnecting, but a little bit of pressure fixed that. If you want to make sure that doesn't happen, there is a stronger type of foam tape that comes in a red roll, but that stuff does not ever want to come off, so if you ever plan on using these parts in future projects, this tape works fine. That about wraps things up. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to share them in the comments below. And if you want to see more robotics and electronics content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.